In 2021, Buster Posey, a catcher with the San Francisco Giants, retired. Drafted in 2008, Posey would go on to become a seven-time All-Star and help the Giants win the World Series three times. He is considered one of the best catchers of all time and is expected to be elected into the Hall of Fame. How do we find the next Buster Posey or any valuable player? Scouting is one tool that a baseball team uses to identify potential acquisitions. Scouts observe these players at various levels, such as college and minor league games, and look for certain baseball-centric physical abilities, such as hitting, power, running, fielding, and throwing. Data analyses of the statistics of a player also provide insight into a player's outlook. This quantification of a player's performance is known as sabermetrics. This combination of scouting and sabermetrics is the standard today in player evaluation. Here is an image of a game between Yale and Holy Cross. Maybe this catcher just might be what a major league team is looking for. With the increase in computing power, more tools have emerged that can enhance the evaluation process. These tools belong to a field known as artificial intelligence. Computer programs in this field are built to perform tasks considered limited to human intelligence. This includes making predictions, looking for patterns, and decision-making. I'll be focusing on an area of artificial intelligence known as machine learning, where data is used to train a computer program that can be used to make predictions or show patterns using other sources of data. We refer to this program as a model. Since the 19th century, baseball statistics have been used to get an idea of player performance. This data is collected by various organizations. We have traditional statistics such as batting average, home runs, and ERA. We also have relatively more complex statistics such as on-base percentage, slugging, and wins above replacement. In addition to all of these metrics, there are newer metrics such as exit velocity, launch angle, and arm strength, which can be obtained from MLB's StatCast. Once we have data to work with, we can build models that can be trained to make predictions. There are different types of models, but I'll talk about the possibility of using a neural network which has become more practical with the technology that we have today to help predict player value. This is a graph of a machine learning model known as a neural network. We can divide this into three layers, an input layer, a hidden layer, and an output layer. The input layer represents what we call predictive features. In this case, we would pass in baseball data. For example, we can pass in hits, walks, and on-base percentage. We can also pass in newer statistics, such as exit velocity and launch angle. The hidden layer contains these nodes called neurons that will take the input data and make computations that will result in a prediction in the output layer. The prediction can give an idea of how valuable a player is based on these predictive features. This is a graph of a simple neural network. When we have more than two hidden layers, we have what is called a deep learning neural network. This graph 
has four hidden layers. As you can see, this network can capture more interactions when returning a prediction. This type of network would be useful for baseball data, which is large and complex. Because of increasing computing power, neural networks such as this one have become more practical. We can add even more features here. For example, we can pass in runs, slugging, and pop time. Pop time, by the way, is how fast the catcher can throw a ball to a base on stolen base attempts or pickoffs. We can add many features and build a model and generate a prediction based on those features. In this case, we can ask a question. Is a player that we're interested similar to the type of player that we want? This output would be a numerical value, and we can use these values to decide if we should make a move. Interpretability is a problem with deep learning. This network takes all of these different interactions into account, but the prediction doesn't tell us which features are significant. We can use SHAP, or Shapley Additive Explanations, which is software based on game theory. We can generate a summary plot such as this and see how much contribution a feature is making to the prediction. This plot has nothing to do with baseball, but as an example, maybe this feature here could be batting average. This feature here could be exit velocity. Exit velocity is more important than batting average, according to this plot. And a higher SHAP value indicates more impact. This is an example of how we can use a neural network. For the example that I've been talking about, this would be a regression problem. We would get a numerical value as the output. We train using batting, running, and fielding data for position players and pitching data for pitchers. We would not use k-fold cross-validation, but instead use a validation split during training to validate the model using validation scores. There are several approaches to combat overfitting. We can adjust the size of the network by adding or removing hidden layers and neurons. We should start with a small network first, then increase capacity by adding more neurons and hidden layers until we no longer see any improvements in the validation score. We can use early stopping, which stops training when model performance is no longer improving. We can also use L1 and L2 regularization, which penalizes larger weights and decreases the impact of a neuron. With dropout, we use probability to randomly turn off a neuron during training and decrease the complexity of the model. If the model is not performing well, we should try to improve the training data. We do this by obtaining more data or using data augmentation. We can also adjust the hyperparameters. For example, we can change the layer size or use regularization. And if the model has good performance, we can allocate more resources to scouting this player and more resources to possible acquisition.
In 2003, a book called Moneyball, The Art of Winning an Unfair Game, which was written by Michael Lewis, described how the Oakland Athletics used statistics to find undervalued players. They did not just use traditional scouting techniques. The result was the ability to compete with teams with larger payrolls and going to the playoffs. Today, all 30 MLB teams have data analytics teams, which demonstrates the importance of data science in baseball. Every move is expensive, and teams will do as much as possible to not be at a disadvantage. The neural network model that I described is an example of something that can be implemented to find valuable players, including someone like Buster Posey.